Good evening one and all and welcome to the video. Uh, this video I want to talk about AWS Lambda concurrency. You might probably know about this but if you don't please watch this video and I'll make sure you know about this. So recently I was working on a project where I was working on real-time stream events for like example clicks, views, we were doing those using lambdas. Suddenly I observed that there was at a particular time there was a burst of uh, events coming in maybe like 200 events in a second. So which is why we want to understand the concept of concurrency in lambdas and how it works. So this video I'll talk about provision and reserved um, um, concurrency in AWS Lambda. So let's get started. I have a small presentation. Hope you will enjoy the presentation. Okay. What is concurrency? Concurrency is the concept of executing two or more tasks at the same time. Uh, tasks may include methods, that like function, part of programs, or even programs with, cur with current computer architecture supports for multiple cores and multiple processes in a single CPU is very common. Well, this is a definition I, I took from Wikipedia, just about concurrency. It's about executing things in parallel. Uh, it's equally important for us to understand how Lambda works. So uh, when you invoke a Lambda, first of all, the container spins up, right? This is all that happens behind the scenes. You don't know, see that. Container spins up, it loads your code and it runs the code. Well, in order to uh, essentially pull up the container, spin up a container, load the code, there is a there is a little bit millisecond or microsecond needed. That's essentially called cold start, okay? So easily as number of invocation come, it essentially spins more and more container and you can scale up easily. Concurrency are usually of two type, reserved and provision concurrency. Let me, uh, sorry, there's a typo, but let me talk about reserved concurrency. Say on your account, you have, let's say, 100 concurrency reserved. What, what does that mean? Let's say you have five Lambda functions. One, two, three, four, five. Each of them is developed by each developer, right? Now, let's say Lambda 1 is using 10 of them. Lambda 2 is using 10. Lambda 3 is using 10. Lambda 4 is using 10. And there are hundreds available, right? So 40 are gone. So 60 are available for Lambda 5. That's called, uh, these are called unreserved um, uh, concurrency pool, right? So essentially your Lambda is going to take from the unreserved concurrency if a certain burst come in. But this is not good because think about it. When other application Lambda are using more, the, the concurrency might not be available for your the fifth Lambda, which is why you want to reserve a concurrency when working with Lambda. I'll show you an example. Reserved concurrency guarantees that the maximum number of concurrent instances for a function. When function has a reserved concurrency, no other function can use that concurrency. There is no charge for configuring that. It's absolutely free. Um, reserving concurrency has following effect. Other function cannot cannot prevent your function from scaling. So, uh, it, uh, so you you make sure that you want to scale. So other other functions uh, will make sure they kind of cannot prevent you, right? Uh, your function uh, cannot scale out of control. So uh, let's say you have a hundred reserved, unreserved, and if you just try it, man, you're gonna boom. You know, all the other functions are gonna throttle down because you give everything to this lambda, which is why it's important to know about these concepts. Uh, then we have provisional um, uh, concurrency. So this is usually used when you, uh, now as I said, right, when you invoke a Lambda, there's a cold start, right? You can essentially tell AWS that, hey, I want to act immediately when a request come. Do, uh, so your all these containers will be already, will be ready. This will be in like a warm state. Let's read. Provision concurrency initializes the requested number of execution environments so that they are prepared to res respond immediately to your function invocation. Note that, I mean, we'll, we'll see that. Uh, this is just a chart showing that, uh, you know, uh, this is your burst limit that comes in and the request of, you know, provision concurrency. So this graph I have taken from one of my application. As you can see, at a particular time, we had a sudden burst of events, right? If I did not set up concurrency, it would consume my all the unreserved concurrency and other application Lambda will suffer because of throttling now, which is why what I did, I said, I want to reserve it. So I set up concurrency. I said, hey, the maximum you can use is 100, not more than that. Then I also added provisional concurrency. So in order to uh, respond to immediately with a uh, sudden burst, right, I had 10 provision concurrency ready. So immediately they are ready. And then I have a maximum of 100. So I can easily increase this number. So as you can see, at a particular time, I had a peak of about 40 concurrency, which means at that second, 40 events were flowing in. So that's, uh, there were instances when we had more than 100 also, I guess. But remember, 
this is not free. You got to pay money. If you enable provision concurrency, let's say I want to have 90 provision containers ready for my Lambda to act immediately. You're going to pay like about $125 a month, depending upon the pricing model, go into that. I don't want to go much detail. And this is a reference that I've taken from Amazon um, official documentation. Hope you have really enjoyed uh, learning about uh, concurrency on Lambda. And if you did find this uh, content useful, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to make more contents for you. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming, and I will see you guys in the next video.